Greetings. It's a lovely morning for a YouTube video. <laughs> We're right in my nursery, and I have currently doubled the size of my production tables here. Um, I'd like to show you uh, about building nursery tables. Every nursery has to have some way to keep the plants up and off the ground or in some cases to bring the plants up to a higher level so you can work on them but in general keeping your plants elevated off the surface of the soil is going to go a long way to keep them from getting filled with ants and various types of pests and so on um, and so nursery tables are an essential when uh, I lived in the mainland uh, Back in the Midwest, I used to try to find either cedar or cypress from old granaries and old uh, silos to be able to use for this purpose. Uh, while well, living in California, we had lots and lots of old growth redwood around uh, to recycle, again, as nursery tables and greenhouse benches. The redwood worked pretty well. If you put it together with galvanized fasteners, it held up for quite a while. Um, here in Hawaii, I don't have any of those materials. There's no cypress here. Uh, there's a little redwood around, but it's kind of rare, so uh, it would be a pricey item. And so the best option we have here is exactly the same technique that all the commercial guys use, and that's concrete and galvanized metal. Check it out. Here's an overview of my production area uh, showing the two older tables with their plants right over here though I've got a brand new table that I just put in now this varies from the older ones just by a bit the uh, fencing panels I'm using for these table tops used to be four feet wide currently it looks like the guys have five footers so I've got five foot wide tables holds even more stuff takes up a little more room but it holds more stuff um, right over here you see that we're using a standard concrete building block as the base um, I leveled the area we went through and tried to make sure that everything was pretty flat where we set the blocks down now the entire area does not need to be perfectly flat it's just basically trying to get each block leveled to the other block um, and then on top of those blocks I've added uh, chain link fence pipe right here you can see the pipe and I have set it in the indentations that are naturally in these concrete blocks and if you look right here I got a little bit of galvanized baling wire that's twisted between the block around the tabletop and around the pipe to uh, keep the entire affair from rolling if we ever happen to get a good earthquake so I'm using 12 concrete blocks stood upright with three 16 foot lengths of inch and a half galvanized fenced pipe uh, put up on top of it. That's the type they use for the chain link fencing. And then over the top of that, we have a five foot wide by 16 foot long galvanized fence panel. Right over here, I have another panel that I haven't put into use yet. Now, this one I plan to cut into two eight foot tables to use for shade plants. So this is, uh, it's sold uh, either at uh, uh, greenhouse grower supply stores uh, here on the island have this stuff. You can also find it at the farm stores. You know, and so feed and supply stores ordinarily have this. This is what's called a galvanized steel fence panel. Um, they run out, uh, oh, short of a hundred bucks. I think best price around here is somewhere right around 90 bucks for one of these panels. They're a little hard to move. Uh, lucky for me, the guy I bought them from was willing to drop them off here. So what you have here is a heavy steel wire that's been spot welded together at the joints. And the whole thing is, is uh, plated with zinc. Here's the newest table um, that I set up. It's actually uh, up the hill from the rest of the nursery, which is down there below the coffee. I'm going to have to build myself a little bit of a staircase coming up here uh, so I can get up and down more easily. But trying to utilize all the space we got for growing. Uh, this table shows quite clearly how we've laid it out. Now, I have seen growers do these tables with 
out the steel pipes underneath um, with the tabletop just laid directly on the blocks. And for light plants like orchid, for instance, it does work. But I found with some of the stuff I grow, to get into trees and heavy pots, they begin to sag if you don't have the reinforcement. So that's why I've chosen for using the pipes. It makes the tables more expensive because the pipe isn't cheap, but uh, it does work really, really well. So if you use weed block underneath the tables like I've done here, then you don't have to worry about stuff coming up under there. Uh, it keeps it clean. You sweep it off, wash it off, blow it off, whatever. So from up here on the fourth table, we have a nice overview of the rest of the nursery, which is down in the backyard. The fifth table will eventually come in over here so I can get all my orchids and shade plants and such off the ground. And of course, you don't want to forget the signature tennis ball corners because I tell you, you sure can tear up a pair of pants coming around the corner of these things real fast if you're not careful. Eventually, the tennis balls become quite organic. Um, this guy right here looks like he's becoming part of the local rainforest. He's been out there quite a few years. They hold up well, though. The uh, underside edge of these tables also makes a little bit of shade, which is handy for starting cuttings and holding plants that don't really like sun that much. There you have it. Bill's new nursery tables. Um, like I say, there's a lot of different ways you can build structures to grow plants up on. Uh, I really like this one. I would not say that it's the cheapest way to go. Um, the uh, blocks are two dollars a piece here on the island. Um, I probably have sixty or seventy dollars tied up in the piping on the tables. The uh, tops of the tables uh, run out right around ninety dollars a piece and so on. So they don't quite give them away, but they go together real easy. It's a real fast process. I could build a lot of these in a day. The hardest part actually is getting the blocks leveled. That's really the most difficult part of the entire process. Um, they will last for years. My old tables have been here for a decade now, and uh, they're doing quite well, seeing no signs of deterioration, with the exception of the tennis balls. Um, yeah, so uh, I highly recommend the utilization of, uh, of galvanized metal and concrete for nursery tables, as opposed to uh, using lumber, unless you can get your lumber as a recycle, then it's really a bonus. Uh, unfortunately, uh, since the only timber industry we have here in Hawaii is for exotic hardwoods, uh, we don't have a whole lot of uh, easily and readily available uh, quality waterproof type timber uh, here. So, If you happen to live in California, though, Redwood's a good thing because there's so much of it around that people literally just take to the dump all the time. Uh, I used to get projects where I would take down fences, decks, pergolas, all sorts of different old redwood appliances. If they came, uh, say, back from the 60s and the 70s, you still get the old-growth virgin redwood that was thousands of years old. That stuff lasts forever. It's really durable. And so if you have that option, or if you live somewhere in the eastern U.S. where you can come across cypress, uh, there was a lot of cypress put into uh, uh, silos and granaries in the eastern U.S. years ago. Uh, that stuff's still pretty good, and so you can recycle that as a nursery table. But here on the island, it's the way to go. Happy gardening. Aloha. Well, thanks for watching.